Welcome, Wine Snobs, to another <laughs> segment, another edition of Wine Snob TV. Uh, this is for Wine Snob Calendar, and today we will be doing Riesling Day, which is March 13th. Correct. <laughs> and in the year 2021, it's Saturday. He says so. <laughs> yes, I got it. Um, so Riesling Day. Uh, so today, uh, you know, uh, first of all, I want to say uh, I'm sorry if like, you know, I came across as just inviting you only to the sangria and the mulled wine, the mixing stuff with wine. <laughs> Were you, were, were you in any way like, you know, wondering, you know, like, when are we actually going to have just wine and do a wine? So. No, not at all. <laughs> I want to try all the wine in all the various ways. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> all right, that says it all. <laughs> um, that's why I have her back me up. Um, so uh, today we are going to be visiting Riesling, looking at Riesling. Um, a couple weeks ago, I put board out on IG, Instagram, asking if, in anticipation of this, asking if anyone there, because there's a bunch of um, not just wine snobs, but there's also um, winemakers. And a lot of them are small artisan, small batch production winemakers and local. And uh, so I put word out and asked if anyone had a Riesling because I went into the cellar and I realized I don't have any Riesling. What the hell? Yeah, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> He's crossed over to the dark side and yeah. there's no bringing him Can back. Can you tell I drink only reds? <laughs> oh my God. Um, so I put the word out. I was like, wow, I better get a rush on this. You know, because I was thinking, ah, I'll get around to it Riesling day. And then I realized, holy crap, I don't have any Riesling. Um, and, and a good one at that. So I put word out and asked if anyone had a Riesling or knew anyone who made a Riesling that uh, would like to feature on uh, Riesling Day. And uh, lo and behold, because I have quite a few friends on there and uh, so I lose track oftentimes and my good friend Matt at Three Wine Company down at the old sugar mill in Clarksburg um, hit me up and was like, I got a Riesling. Matter of fact, I got two Rieslings. So I, was, so I happened to be free that day. It was, I think it was a Saturday or something. And I just jumped in the car and just, I was like, I'll be there today. <laughs> <laughs> so I went out there and, you know, it's funny. We've, we've been, you know, friends on IG for at least a year now. And, but I've never actually met him. He manages the, uh, the winery over there, the tasting room at uh, um, the old sugar mill. Um, but I've never actually met him. But we, you know, we correspond on Instagram and uh, so it's nice one to meet him and two to go and take a look at the you know they have a, an impressive selection of wines um, and that's what I like about artisan wines and these smaller wineries is uh, rather than scale one wine they just make many different small batches of many different wines that change from year to year you know from one vintage to another um, based on availability, either as state or, you know, other growers. Uh, so that was really nice uh, to go there. And I mean, he literally ran me down, you know, the, the gauntlet, which was, it was, it was quite a, quite a feat, but I, I made it through um, some impressive wines. I brought back a bunch, which we'll be looking at over the course of the rest of the year. They'll be popping up in the feeds. Um, but uh, the mission that day was the Riesling and uh, a dry Riesling, a dry Riesling, so which is this here, and a late harvest Riesling. So it was perfect because we get to look today, we get to look at two styles of Riesling. I thought they were good, um, uh, well-made Riesling, so it would be interesting to see what you think. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about, you know, what we see and, you know, what we're tasting. Um, but yeah, oh, <clears throat> This is a little tip I got from my good friend Matt. <laughs> We're saving it for later. Um, we'll, we'll try it out later. It's an interesting tip. He tried it um, while I was there tasting and I was like, whoa, that's incredible. That's pretty cool. So 
Yeah, I saw the lemon and I wasn't sure if we were going to be making tea or taking tequila right. shots <laughs> after we're off camera. So maybe. yeah, on, on our way I said, hey, can you, uh, can you uh, pick up, can you, if, you, if it's not at all, a, you know, any trouble, could you please pick up a Mayer lemon? And uh, so I could just see her just like, Mayer lemon? <laughs> were you wondering like, what was that about? <laughs> Yeah, that part really threw me off, but anything for Brian, Thanks. so. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so yeah, and fortunately she found one. She always comes through um, and uh, that's for tonight's experiment with the late harvest. So it'd be interesting to see your reaction. I'm definitely excited to try the late harvest. I mean, excited <laughs> to try both, but definitely that late harvest. Do you want to just skip and go to late harvest? That's okay, you know, life, life is short. I always say eat your dessert first. <laughs> All right, so, um, so Riesling, uh, being the gracious co-host that Crystal is, I um, burdened her with looking into Riesling and helping us navigate our way around what Riesling is. <laughs> so I believe you have something for us. I have a little something here. <clears throat> I feel like a little news anchor right now. Yeah. <laughs> so Rieslings are, as you can tell, um, white grape variety originated in the Rhine region of Germany. They tend to be very aromatic, displaying flowery, almost perfumed aromas. And they range from semi-sweet up to um, dry or very dry wines, including uh, sparkling white wines as well. They are seldomly oaked and they usually tend to be in the top three of white wines together, along with Chardonnay and Sauvignon Blanc. Um, you always or you often hear Brian talk about terroir. Uh, so these, <laughs> these wines are highly terroir expressive, which means that the character of the Riesling wines are greatly influenced by its origins. Nice. <laughs> I, I, I couldn't have thought of a more perfect synopsis of Riesling. <laughs> uh, if you have any more, uh, you'd like to, any more details on Rieslings you, you'd like to add, drop them in the comments below. Reach out to me directly. I want to add those to the blog post ultimately. And uh, maybe next year's, maybe you can help write next year's Riesling Day script. <laughs> but I think that summarizes it perfectly. I couldn't have done any better. It makes sense that um, it's seldom oaked because it um, it's a very aromatic varietal and oaking only distracts, so there's no need to oak, you know, if it already comes out with this very rich variety um, aromas, um, there's no need to oak it. So that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I like that and it is true. So, um, well, do you want to find out? I would love to find out. <laughs> <laughs> have you had Rieslings before? Of I of course, but of course. never really <laughs> noted. You know, it was uh, probably probably one of the first, you know, three introductory wines in a flight, and you kind of just hurry through those and right. you know cut to the chase. Exactly. <laughs> so we'll put this over here, and let me get this started. So I myself, obviously, not having any riesling in my cellar. I, I, I just shut up. I'm, I'm actually embarrassed <laughs> to admit it, especially on record. Um, I feel like it erodes my reputation. <laughs> 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 what can I say? You know, I, I, the few whites that come through. I don't I, think it's a terrible thing. I mean, you know, people, there are several people who love red wine and abhor white wines, and some people are the complete opposite. I have to say, um, Wine Snob, Doing Wine Snob has compelled me to um, expand back my palate uh, to whites and to taste them objectively. Um, and, you know, uh, just because not everybody is like me. If everyone was like me, they would drink Pinot Noir and Barolo. The Biolo from it is like the two opposites of the spectrum of reds. But uh, not everyone really cares for those. Most people are somewhere in the middle there with Zins and Merlots and Cabs. Um, so 
and and there are some really especially on the artisan side of the artisan winemakers they make some just amazing aromatic really nice zippers for a white wine so uh, that definitely helps yeah. you know, white wine off the shelf nah. <laughs> <laughs> well this is the perfect time to get reacquainted with white wines yes. you know we're heading into spring summer season here real soon so yeah. I think you're, you've got a head start, <laughs> but you still have a lot of homework to do on the white wine. <laughs> I do, I do, yes. Um, so let's uh, dive in here. It's been chilling for about uh, 20 minutes and the cellar right now in the winter is about 55 degrees. Huh. It smells good. Yeah, some leather. I love it when the white wine has leather in it. It's a lot of flora moats. It went down like butter. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean like in a she good, cut right in it. a good, in a good way. Yeah, that's, <laughs> I'm still on the nose. She's like past the finish. <laughs> ah, there's some nice. Um, Gosh, uh, very floral. It's hard. I can't pinpoint exactly. Maybe a little bit of honeysuckle. Honey, honey, definitely. Yeah, a little honeysuckle. bit of honeysuckle in there. But the it's right up there, right next to it is is this leather, this mm -hmm. leathery terroir. It's like a loamy, almost loamy, like wet soil, and uh, and driftwood. I like it. Oh. I can just sniff all day when the wine does that. <laughs> I almost don't care what else follows. I could be bad. You know, some people don't like that. And, I, you know, I understand that. But, oh, I like <laughs> leather in my wine. <laughs> I think you're going to like this one, Brian. It's, just drink it already. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Mmm. <laughs> yeah. You know, for as um, expressive as a nose is, you expect it to hit you with a little bit of like, you know, like oomph, mm -hmm. but it actually just fades away. And it's got a buttery mouse feel, mm -hmm. a creamy mouse feel there. You know, a lot of, you know, most white varietals come with this like acidic attack, which kind of like opens up things and, you know, mm -hmm. you know, tightens very tight, but this is actually relaxed. Yeah, the honeysuckle comes through. It just echoes, it, it sits in the back there on the body. And the finish is almost it's seamless. It's indistinguishable. It just it just fades away. It's like it's like sipping a cloud. So you could drink this all day in a nice spring day. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. This super chilled. Oh yeah. Invite me over, Brian. Mm. I'll bring the cheese. <laughs> Just pretending like I need to invite her over. <laughs> Just let me know. <laughs> I need some Riesling. Okay, okay. Not just any Riesling, this yeah. specific Riesling yes. here. You know, I need to go back there and um, do a segment on site. Uh, I think that would be fun. Uh, you're welcome to come along if you're available. I'd love to. Let's plan it. Let's schedule it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's super nice out there. You know, I haven't been back to Old Sugar Mill in, man, now I think about it, like a decade almost. And uh, back then it was much different too, you know, different styles of making wine. And so going back and rediscovering the wines there, you know, it was just really, uh, it was fun. Uh, you know, the, just the winemaking, the, the execution has definitely matured a lot. Um, and a lot of finesse, um, really good craft. So I highly recommend it, Old Sugar Mill. I'll try to do, if you're interested in seeing a segment on Old Sugar Mill, uh, let me know in the comments below. I'll bump that up the list. Um, but it's a fun place. It's an old, literally an old sugar mill. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. So picture us. Yeah, it's right by the river and, uh, you know, brickwork and whatnot, old world style and industrial, but it's been converted inside and there's this, um, like a co-op, co a right. co-op of small artisan wineries. And there's just so many of them, don't even try to explore all of them in one time. 
if you really you just you have to do multiple trips but it's a great destination for great wines it's also a great tourist destination for wine tourists um, off the beaten path you know if you don't want to just hit the usual stuff you can go to somewhere like old sugar mill and you'd be guaranteed to find some some decent wines so and great photo opportunities yes yes <laughs> speaking of uh, finish it's, it finish comes much later and it's just a hint of pepper there's a hint of pepper and then it vanishes interesting That is a very nice Riesling. So this Riesling is, um, the grapes are originally from Monterey County, Sweetwater Ranch. That explains the expression. You know, most wines I uh, taste from Monterey have this very muted, restrained, smooth expression. And it's just that climate, you know, for Monterey. Um, it's just unbeatable. It's perfect for aromatic, expressive, terroir-driven varietals like Riesling and Pinot Noir. Um, you know, you, if you ever see, if you're ever looking at a menu and you don't know what to pick, <laughs> pick a Riesling from Monterey. If there's anything from Monterey, especially if it's a Riesling or like a Pinot Noir, just pick it. When in doubt, pick the Riesling. <laughs> right. So, you know, a lot of people wonder, you know, hey, so how do I pick wine out of a menu and such and such and such? And it's just really, and, and even I myself have gone through quite a bit of wine. Um, but a lot of times I'll look at the menu and I won't recognize anything. But what I do recognize are the regions. And what I'm cognizant of is what varietals thrive and express themselves the best in those regions. And uh, so if you're looking at a menu and you can't recognize anything and you're worried that you might pick something that's cheap, you know, or like vinegary or just not there, um, you can always look. I always look for certain specific regions. Monterey is one of them. Paso Robles is another one. Santa Barbara is another one, Central Coast. Uh, Sonoma is always, always goes well with me. Um, and Napa, of course. Of course. Those are, yeah, those are sure, those are sure bets. Um, you kind of know what you're going to get. But Monterey, regardless of the tier, the price point, Monterey always delivers. So. Those are really great tips, Brian. Yeah. I'm not surprised by um, this Riesling's expression and it being from Monterey. This is the first time I'm reading the label, by the way. Sorry, Matt. <laughs> I didn't have enough time to do my homework. I had a busy work day. Yeah. All right. So there you have it. That's uh, our dry Riesling, 2019. So go online and buy 10 cases. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be a link below um, on uh, how to get in touch with Three Wine Company. Um, and we'll tag them on Instagram as well. Um, reach out to them. They're a small uh, wine winemaker, winery. Uh, reach out to them and just call on your order or go to a website actually on the website. Um, all their wines were great. Um, and, and should they say that Brian sent them, or Wine Snob sent them? Oh yeah, it's a, <laughs> tell them Wine Snob says hi. <laughs> <laughs> um, I went through all the wines and I couldn't fault any of them. Um, they were right on the money. They, were, they just stayed right on the money as far as expression, you know, uh, execution. Um, I think currently they're running low. They just put an, uh, a notice out they're running low on some of their um, uh, unique vintages um, for Zinfandels and Syrahs. I think their last Syrah that they made, which was a 2013, which is very nice. And that's part of their um, upper end signature uh, vintage. And uh, I taste, I brought a bottle back, a couple bottles, and I'm going to be reviewing those as well. Um, so yeah, fantastic wines, check them out. Okay, um, I, I, I'm sensing you want to. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah let's of do course. It. Let's do so it. Uh, here we are. We have the late harvest Riesling, and uh, this one is uh, what vintage is this? 2007. <sighs> Ooh, this is ripe. 
2007. Wow, now, now it's all coming back. I remember this is what really caught my attention. Um, was that it had really been aged appropriately. Um, and it's probably, you know, has something to do with the color as well. But anyway, we're gonna dive in here. Look at that, it's like honey. It looks viscous. All right. 2007 late I'm, artist. I'm just heads up, I'm expecting a very like biblical poetic description <laughs> coming from you. <laughs> <laughs> That's when I usually have time to focus a little bit and I don't have two cameras looking at me. <laughs> the pressure. <laughs> I don't want to subject people to 20 minutes of me just sitting there <laughs> sniffing for five minutes on end wondering, when is he going to drink? <laughs> oh, the honeysuckle really comes through big time. This, like an exotic honey, you know, like a manuka honey. Have you had manuka? I honey? have. Yeah. That's right. Look it up, wine snobs. <laughs> the last, the, the last segment I did, I recommended you get um, the spices from Mald Wine Day. Um, just, you know, as a repertoire in your repertoire to kind of, you know, train your palate to recognize certain scents. Get a bottle, a little jar of Manuka honey, if for nothing else, just to sniff. <laughs> it's rich. It's a rich, expensive honey. That I can't remember exactly the deal is it's really expensive. It's very, very nuanced and it comes from, is it New Zealand or something like that? Oh honey, I don't yeah. know where it comes from, but it's good stuff. <laughs> don't hold me to it, please. Don't hold me to it. Um, and uh, I love you, <laughs> New Zealand, or wherever Manuka honey comes from. Um, but yeah, so it has a very exotic honey essence to it. That leather also permeates the background, which is nice. That's a terroir, that's a terroir coming through. It's very woody. It has like a, almost like a cedar, like an old cedar wood, like infusion. Mm -hmm. But the honeysuckle and the exotic honey just, you know, it'll blow your palate. You know, it just comes front and center and it's like, me, 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 me. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Oh, that's rich. And dive in? <laughs> I want to dive in. Okay, let's go. <laughs> It's like 50% honey. Essentially. <laughs> this is nectar. This is, that's the word. But you nectar. could even pour it over your pancakes and waffles. You probably could. <laughs> Maybe on top of vanilla ice cream. If you did a reduction of this, no, the, yeah, on vanilla ice cream. Yeah, I can see that. If you did a reduction of this, wow, like got kind of more concentrated. But yeah, there's a lot of rich, I can't really say caramel because caramel really starts with uh, cane sugar. That's not the case here. This is natural um, sugars. Like um, it, it has the essence of like natural nectars. Yeah, definitely. Just really condensed. I'm thinking like a summer fruit salad, and you just pour this over the top like a dressing. Boom. That would be amazing. Yes, <laughs> with like little hints of like a tart mandarin definitely. chopped in there. Oh, that would you know, give you that burst <laughs> of acidity to kind of counterbalance this. It's got that buttery body, but it's also very viscous and uh, very nectar-like. Um, mouthfeel it's very nice it's also relatively it's also low alcohol for a late harvest um, I believe it's like 13 point something 13.7 um, very nice it's had time to really integrate and just come of age and I believe this was the only vintage they have of it so you might want to like jump on the website or call them up 
I seem to recall him <laughs> saying all <laughs> something like they were down to a couple cases. Um, that's the beauty of artisan wines, is high demand. They'll make an amazing vintage because it's such a small mm -hmm. um, production. Um, they'll make a vintage, and you know, it's whatever they got from the vineyard, and it's whatever that year gave them. And so, from one vintage to the next of the same wine, are not going to be identical. And that's the magic of it, you know, as opposed to the big, high production wineries where they have the luxury because it's such a big production, they can cross blend and they can, you know, blend across vintages and, you know, try to keep a somewhat consistent um, characteristics. But I like this unique and exclusive. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So. I want to try. So what? wait, are we taking body shots now, or what? <laughs> <laughs> what's the big Hold surprise on. Screen here? Screen go blank. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, we're gonna try the Mayer lemon and just put a few drops in there. some serious LPO. <clears throat> so lemon isn't just for beer and tequila shots. It's also for a late harvest Riesling. Yeah, who knew? Who knew? That was a little, it has to be a Mayer <laughs> lemon. Meyer lemon. Oh, sorry. Lemon. <laughs> well, I don't know. Mayer, Meyer, orange, yeah. orange. <laughs> hey, I usually after, after the first glass, all bets are off. My, my native accent comes out. Um, Meyer lemon. It has to be a Meyer lemon. Um, I, that's what he told me, and so that's what we're doing. So, Meyer Lemon, try this when you're having like a late harvest, or if you're experimenting, exploring late harvest white wines, you know, try them out. Let me know in the comments. I want to know what you discover. If you find any hidden gems, absolutely. I want to know. I want to know these things. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you think with without the Meyer? I, you know, so I'm, I've never really been into ports and, you know, late harvest usually isn't my thing. Obviously I wouldn't drink like a full glass of it. I mean, this is, this is what we need, right? Um, but this has a way of just, cut that out. <laughs> oh my God, I don't know what I want to say. <laughs> That's how good it is. She's speechless. <laughs> I, I'm basically speechless. <laughs> wow. Hey, Matt. <laughs> I owe you one. <laughs> wow. No, this is, it's delicious. I'm, I putting, I'm putting this in my arsenal. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name's Wine Snob. Would you like some late harvest Riesling and a Meyer lemon? Oh my God. <laughs> Oh my God, I'm speechless. <laughs> I'm totally speechless. This is so good. Like, Jeez. I don't even know how to describe it. I really don't, but it's amazing with or without the lemon, but the lemon, yeah. definitely with the lemon. <laughs> yeah, every time. <laughs> okay, so dry or late harvest? Well, I mean, if you're gonna do like a full on day of drinking, you've obviously got to do the dry because you're not gonna drink you know, a late harvest all day long. Yeah, this is not for drinking. Um, yeah, it's for sipping. For sipping. The best part is it holds because it has those concentrated sugars in there, uh, that residual sugar from the late harvest. And um, it, it just, it preserves it. It acts as a preservative, <laughs> and, you know, natural preservative. So you can just cork this back up and uh, keep it in the fridge. That's what I do. Just keep it in the fridge and it'll hold almost indefinitely it'll hold longer than it'll take you to go through it and you can treat yourself you know if you want to skip dessert just pour a splash of that you know just maybe a shot or so and, and uh, uh, don't and forget a, the a few of drops lemon. of a couple drops of uh, meyer lemon 
Yeah. One wedge is good enough for about four. Oh, it's so rich. I love it. I love it. Complex. I like it when a, you know, like a white wine does that. When it, 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 it introduces layers. Um, I think too often you find whites that are just, they, they're three dimensional. You know, they, they're crisp. They have a hint of aroma on the nose. They're acidic. That's it. Maybe they have a peppery finish or something else going on. And it's like, that's it, you know. And, but I love it when, you know, I see, a, I love to see a white wine play around with, uh, with notes and characteristics as if it were a red wine, a rich red wine. So I love that, definitely. This is a great Riesling. I do recommend. Check them out. Three Wine Company. Thank you, Matt. Um, and uh, let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any favorite Rieslings. Drop them in the comments, either on IG, YouTube, wherever this is, or on the blog, reach out to me. I would love to know, and I would love to taste what you're tasting, because don't keep it from me. If you <laughs> have anything good, I want to know what it is, and I want to try it, because I'm showing you what's good for me, what I like, so you owe me. <laughs> <laughs> and he's not joking. He it's doesn't. Fair, he, right? Before this, he didn't have any Rieslings in his wine cellar. So. Yes. <laughs> I do not have any Rieslings, so perfect. Yes, so we are going to do a drive to get wine snob some Riesling. Hashtag get wine snob Riesling. <laughs> and uh, so I can start stocking up the cellar. So please let me know what your favorites are. And uh, with that, I think uh, it's a wrap for uh, Riesling okay, Day. I think that concludes it. Happy Riesling Day, wine Happy snobs. Happy Riesling Day, March 13th. <laughs> yes. <laughs>